three months, it will be the one year anniversary of owning my MacBook M2 Pro. Reflecting on the investment of roughly $2,700, I believe it represented a fair value. The laptop boasted an exceptional screen and build quality. Initially, I never imagined it would get access to a feature long absent from MacBooks, effective gaming support. You disrespect me. You disrespect my family. You call us stinky poopy babies. <laughs> you punch my wife. You kick my baby. You Midway through the year, Apple introduced the game porting toolkit revolutionizing Mac gaming forever. But what does this mean for the M2 Pro in 2024? In the past, especially during the Intel era, running PC games on a Mac was a challenging endeavor. Now, thanks to the innovative toolkit, your $3,000 laptop can finally adequately run games. Interestingly, these laptops have come down to a more reasonable price, with many selling between $1,000 and $2,000 depending on the specifications. Is it worth getting hurt again? Yeah. Going to jail? Yep. Getting killed? Yes, sir. Kissing a man? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no! Whoa, kissing a man, I mean, if it feels natural and that's what you're into, I mean... No, that don't count! That's a do-over! I didn't know you was gonna say that! Guess you really want that chain back. No! The answer is no! After a year of extensive use from composing mundane emails to playing demanding games like Elden Ring, I've tested the capabilities of this device thoroughly. What impresses me the most is that this is merely the mid-level M2 Pro. For around $1,000, you can acquire a laptop with exceptional build quality, a near-perfect screen, and now gaming capabilities. If you're prioritizing the chip over the size, I'd recommend the 14-inch model. It often retails for less and is easier to handle. The 16-inch, while powerful, feels somewhat bulky. For comparison, its keyboard is roughly the size of my 60% mechanical keyboard, the Corsair K70 Mini. The 14-inch is probably the best choice for most, unless you have a very specific preference for why you want the screen larger. MacBooks are renowned for their unmatched build quality. The aluminum shell is sturdy, and the screen is so impressive that many make the mistake of thinking it's touching. The phenomenon, which I've dubbed the Tim Eye effect, occurs when a display Display is so vivid that it instinctively feels like it should be interactive. While the current display technology isn't mini LED, but rather Apple's M2 generation of technology, it sets a high benchmark. The day Apple integrates mini LED into their displays will be somewhat remarkable, but for now, this display offers deep blacks and maintains its brightness and color accuracy nearly after a year. The built in camera and microphone are less frequently used features on this MacBook, yet they serve their purpose well. The camera, while not extraordinary, it is a significant improvement over previous models. It's adequate for FaceTime calls, although not ideal for high quality gaming videos. The microphone, on the other hand, is surprisingly good for its size, capturing clear sound and voice tones, making it suitable for voiceovers. The base model M2 Pro MacBook comes with 16GB of RAM, which is the sweet spot for both current and future use. While 16GB is probably the bare minimum you want to get today, it is sufficient for several years to come. Most configuration Configurations on eBay offer the upgrade 32GB, providing even more flexibility. While the M2 Max variant offers enhanced performance, the absence of an Ultra chip in the MacBook lineup is a missed opportunity for even greater capabilities. The idea of standardizing the M2 Pro as the base chip, accompanied by the M2 Max and hypothetically an M2 Ultra, is intriguing but remains a dream for future generations, I suppose. Choosing the perfect laptop or the best laptop depends on your specific needs and ensuring you get the best value for your investment. For those seeking power and storage, I recommend the M2 14 Max. With at least one terabyte of storage. My only regret with the M2 Pro is not opting for more storage. When purchasing your laptop, you do want to consider whether or not the laptop comes with Apple Care or is Apple Care eligible as repairs can be very costly, sometimes costing the same amount as the system. Apple's advancements, including the ability to play PC games through apps like Crossover by Code Weavers, have significantly enhanced the Mac gaming experience. The evolution marks a significant shift from the past where Mac gaming was just far less feasible. Honestly, thinking about it, I never imagined that this is what Mac ownership was really like, but depending on what you do, you either have paid at least $50 for additional Mac apps and have your Mac configured in a very specific way, or use the basic somewhat janky Mac OS solutions that don't necessarily not work, but don't exactly work how you'd imagine them to work on your $2,000 machine. Like snapping windows with just Mac OS, you're forced to use the weird green button system or a shortcut, or you can pay $5 and get windows snapping for and the same thing goes for archiving and gaming. You could download the game porting toolkit yourself and do everything on your own, but it's so much easier to just pay the money for a crossover, which, yeah, it's possible to do yourself for free, but it's much easier. So it's actually pretty interesting because Mac use for at least the prosumer isn't exactly what you would expect. I can't think of a single paid app on my Windows machine but there's still not quite anything like using a Mac. Honestly, using a Mac has kind of been the greatest laptop experience I've ever had, and it really only gets better with tools like Crossover and, and Windows Snap makes it more like a Windows machine. So the choice is really yours on what is best for you. A MacBook is the 
perfect iPhone companion, and if you have more integration into the Apple ecosystem, then likely it just gets better the more stuff you have. And whenever everything works together, it just tends to be easier to do things. So uh, yeah, if you like this video and everything you thought, the M2 Pro is definitely a good, the M2 Pro is definitely a good value, but the M2 Max is just a lot better. So yeah, if you can find it, go for the M2 Max 14 inch, one terabyte minimum, 14 inch M2 Max, one terabyte minimum, you will not regret it. You likely won't even want to upgrade to the M3 Pro and the M3 Pro Max, which, so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.